My name is Angeliki Varela. I am a qualified lawyer in Greece and New York, and I have recently passed the QLTS assessments on my first attempt. I studied law at the University of Athens, and after my graduation, I worked as a trainee lawyer for about a year. I then moved on to complete an LLM at the University of Pennsylvania in the United States. In 2013, I qualified as a lawyer in Athens and then passed the New York bar exam in New York. Since 2013, I also work as an associate lawyer with a leading law firm in Athens. I decided to take the QLTS because I wanted to take the next step in my professional development and become more competitive in the international legal market. Since a large part of my transactional practice involves M&A and project work, qualifying as an English solicitor seemed to be the natural step in that direction. London is today a major commercial hub and English law remains a top choice of law in international business. With standardized exams, such as the QLTS assessments, the importance of a good preparation course can never be underestimated. A good preparation course can save you time, money, and with the right amount of effort from your side, it can really enhance the chances of a successful outcome. I decided to sign up with QLTS School because they seem to have a great deal of experience with foreign trained candidates, including candidates with a predominantly civil law background. The flexible study hours and the distance learning programs were also a big plus. My experiences of studying with QLTS School were really positive. The added value of the QLTS School preparation course is that it really helps you to navigate through an extensive list of subjects and pinpoint their basics in a manner that is both comprehensive and relevant. The textbooks for the MCT were particularly well written and the exam questions for both the MCT and the OSCE gave me a very good idea of what to expect in the actual exams. The aspect of my QLTS preparation that I found the most beneficial was definitely my interaction with my tutor during the OSCE preparation. Her feedback to my mock exams was always detailed, immediate and personalized. She would answer all of my questions either through email or by setting up an extra Skype conference. Most important, however, she really knew how to tell me to work on my weaknesses and showcase my strengths. For these reasons, I truly believe that she was an integral part of my success in the OSCE. As for most associates working at a law firm setting, my work streams tend to be somewhat unpredictable and even frantic at times. Finding time to study was therefore one of the biggest challenges in preparing for the QLTS. To start with, I would do one to two hours on, week on weekdays, which would then become five to six hours of study on weekends. As the assessments would move closer, I would gradually increase the workload and try to keep up with the pace. Although passing the QLTS was mainly a personal goal, my colleagues were firmly supportive throughout the process. I was allowed a couple of days extra leave, and they were of course very happy to learn that I had passed the assessments in the end. You can never feel fully prepared. However, when I came in to take the QLTS assessments, I felt prepared enough. This gave me the right amount of confidence to know that I could make it. I am now a third year associate at my law firm. I specialize in competition law and litigation, and I also get to do my fair share of M&A and transactional work. I have worked on the structuring of uh, complex transactions with international elements, and also many pri privatization deals in a wide range of sectors from insurance to transport. The QLTS has enabled me to delve into English law and gain a better understanding of the boilerplate clauses that govern commercial agreements nowadays. In terms of my transactional practice, it has facilitated the finding of common ground with my international colleagues and it has allowed me to provide a comprehensive level of service to my clients.
Looking back now, I feel that a preparation course is absolutely necessary for both the MCT and the OSCE, especially for those candidates who do not have an extensive background in English law. Sitting the QLTS requires substantial resources and personal effort, and therefore it is essential to put all the materials into perspective. A good preparation course does exactly this. It is by no means guarantee, but it increases the likelihood of a successful outcome. My advice for anyone planning to take the QLTS is to have faith in yourself and your abilities. If you take your time to study the material, understand the key concepts and revise in the end, there is no reason why you shouldn't make it. If you can afford yourself the luxury of time, start studying as early as possible. However, what is most important is to find a study plan that is tailored to your needs and keep up with it diligently. I would recommend the QLTS to all lawyers who are seeking to enrich their practice with a more international orientation. It would seem fair to say that some practice areas, such as for example M&A or maritime law, appear to be inherently more international in scope than others. However, at an era where the practice of law becomes increasingly globalized, everyone can reap the benefits of a dual qualification. To start with, commercial awareness and an understanding of the client's business are key. These are the tools that provide the appropriate framework in order to proactively solve any problems before they appear or, in case they do appear, provide the client with innovative solutions. Persuasiveness, eloquence and intellectual curiosity are also paramount. After all, a lawyer should have his or her way with words, arguments and logic. Finally, emotional intelligence is a trait that often goes overlooked. However, at a profession which revolves around communication and client skills, its importance cannot be overstressed.